You think your world is safe. It is an illusion. Enjoy these final moments of peace. Hey guys, Kylie here coming to you from the highly anticipated Australian premiere of Star Trek Into Darkness. Tonight we're very lucky to be joined by stars of the film including Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto as well as director JJ Abrams. So let's go check out the red carpet. Your second time round at the helm of this incredible franchise. What do you love most about Star Trek? Um, well, you know, as someone who's a sort of a, a late fan to Star Trek, uh, I've come to really love the, just the heart and soul of these characters. They're incredibly funny. They're, they've got a, a, a wonderful dynamic. And the crazy, massive action adventure they go on, I think only works and lands because you really feel for, care about, and, and relate to the people. Set the scene a little. What can we expect from this second installment of Star Trek? More. <laughs> Bigger, better, more action, more drama. The stakes are raised. We uh, we kind of felt at the end of the first film that you know Kirk had uh, you know uh, got himself into that captain's chair um, you know at a, at a pretty young age and doesn't really sort of understand the full responsibility of, of his job. So you know in this film he really comes to uh, to learn what that means and what's at stake. What I love about he's a man ruled by his passions, and I, he's, he's like a bull in a china shop, and you have to love a man that kind of has no filter, and will, like, if he loves something, he's going to love something, if he's going to, you know, if he's going to wrestle with something, he's going to wrestle with something, if he's determined to get somebody, he's going to go after him, and I really appreciate his, his kind of bullish nature, I, I don't think it's for everyone, and, and certainly he has a thing to, to, to learn or two, and, and that's, I think, where Spock, uh, uh, who becomes his good friend, comes in. Spock, one of the most iconic, most loved fictional characters of all time. What do you love most about him? You know him better than anyone. I love his equanimity. I love his faith in humanity. Um, I love his uh, intelligence. People always assume that he doesn't have an emotional life, and the reality is that he has a, an incredibly deep emotional life, and in this movie he gets to explore what it means to choose to engage it or not. So um, I, I like the fact that he chooses to engage it in this movie, and uh, and I, and I just think he's, um, it's no mistake that, that people love that character so much, and that has so much to do with Leonard Nimoy, so I owe a debt of gratitude to my good friend. I told you, Fred. I am not sure that qualifies. To have to work with um, m m a much narrower range of uh, gestures and facial expression is challenging sometimes, but the thing that I love about his journey in this film is that he actually breaks out of that in a lot of ways and gets to physicalize his emotion in a way that we never got to see him do in the, in the last movie. So I look forward to that and for people to see that part of him. Your commanders have committed a crime I cannot forgive. None of you are safe. Clear the road! Really excited to be able to share the movie finally and talk about it finally and watch it in 3D, which we haven't done yet. There's some stuff that we've done with 3D that, that hasn't been done before. There's some techniques that, that have really only recently kind of uh, been used and employed. And as someone who kind of would get headaches sometimes with 3D and felt like it wasn't used right, it was great to see it used so well. So I was very excited with how they, the 3D process. <laughs> Star Trek fan, I have never seen anything like these, hey, these guys. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? What, is, what does your shirt say? Um, actually, it's not a wolf shirt. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you love Star Trek? Oh, 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to watch the original series with my grandfather when I was younger, and that was that was quite lovely. And then uh, 
when it uh, aired in 1987, uh, the next generation, the pilot episode, I was hooked ever since then. There's a very humanistic message in Star Trek, this belief that with diplomacy and cultural understanding we can achieve peace. It teaches us a lot about, you know, tolerance and being really, you know, accepting of other people, other races. It was one of the first um, TV series ever to have a multiracial cast as well. It's really been absolutely rebooted with Abrams. Just revolutionary storytelling as well as the visuals. It's just stunning. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Done, Thank yeah. You. Thank you. That is the great thing about Star Trek, is that it has a fan base that's been around now for 40 some odd years. It's, they're protective and loving and they, they love these characters as much as we do and it's nice to be able to share that with people that love them so much. There seems to be a lot of genuine affection between all of you guys. How much fun do you all have working together? We have a great amount of fun. And I think it translates on screen. You know, you can't, it's that kind of uh, ineffable quality that you can't really pick up on, but I think people do get that sense. And, and it goes for all of us. We really we get along, we miss each other when we haven't seen one another. What's important in life is your friends and your family. And, and you know, the wonderful thing about the, the characters in this film is there's no links that they won't go to to, to protect them. All the hardship and challenges that the, the crew faces, the main characters face, that it really is their connection to uh, each other and, and loyalty uh, that gets them through it. And that, that to me is something that is a timeless idea. Well guys, that's it from me from the red carpet at the premiere of Star Trek Into Darkness. J.J. Abrams has done an incredible job. Make sure you check it out. <laughs>